All right. So the next step you want to take after managing your forecast rollups is you want to choose your default date range for your forecast types. So what you'll see here is, is that you'll have the ability to open this up and specify the unit of measure. And what I mean by that is whether you want to view your forecast month to month or quarter to quarter, and they give you your forecast periods of monthly and quarterly. Now, one thing to, to note here is you cannot see your forecasts in both monthly and quarterly. You have to choose one over the other. Now, if you wanted to do both, then you would have to do configuration or sorry, customization, which means you'd have to hire develop to, developer to create a custom solution for you to be able to show you forecasts in both monthly and quarterly. And that's kind of a huge overhaul. I really would not recommend going down that path. If you really need to see both your monthly and quarterly information, I would recommend going with monthly. And the reason why is because by using monthly, you can achieve viewing your forecasts per quarter. Yes, you're not going to see multiple quarters in advance as you would see when you'd go with quarterly, but you would be able to set your monthly date range to the current month and then three months in the future. So it defaults to the quarter that you're in. And then if you ever needed to adjust it to the next quarter, you can always adjust it uh, in the front end on the forecast page to the next quarter to see the next quarter's uh, forecast amounts. Um, so I would recommend that because, you know, you can accomplish basically your both your quarterly and your monthly qu forecasting with just monthly. Now, the reason why you'd want to use quarterly is if you're really going to be forecasting uh, far in the future, right? Quarterly covers a lot more months versus going monthly. So you can go well a few, a couple of years in the future of forecasting with quarterly versus monthly, you can't go as far ahead. Um, so when you choose monthly, you'll see it gives you already based off of the decision that you choose. So starting on and extending for, I've chosen current month that we're in and then extending for here, I'm gonna change this from three months. I'm gonna go to, um, let's go to six months. Okay. Now, when you do six months, you'll notice right away, it shows you what your default date range would look like. Now, this is just the default date range. Doesn't mean you have to work within this date range and everyone that signs in is gonna be fixed to this date range. No, this is just the date range that they're going to see when they first log in and view that forecast page. They will see that date range show up by default for them. Now, can they adjust their date range in the front end? Yes. And when they do adjust it, the next time they log off and come back on, they will see that date range still there. So this is just really for that first initial visit to the forecast page for that user. This is the date range that they would see. So you see here, it goes from the month of October, which we're currently in, and we're going into March of 2024. Okay, so let's save this and let's go to our forecast page. And as you see here, this is what I'm talking about. Right here in this menu, it shows me my default that I've selected of October, the current month that we're in, and then the ending period is six months into the future. But I can go in now, if I'm not happy with this, I can say, you know, I don't wanna do six months in the future. I wanna see my forecast a year in the future. Okay, so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into October or uh, September of the next year, so that's 12 months. Okay, hit save. And there you have it. Now you have 12 months worth of forecasting. And you can see the months kind of pile up in this column section right here underneath months. And it tells you how many months you have here. And right away, right, you can see your forecast of months for yourself and any user below you in the forecast hierarchy. Uh, as you can see here, Marco Forrester is below me in the forecast hierarchy. So I can see his forecast amounts um for that particular month so that's forecast date ranges now i can briefly show you quarters as well so if we want we can go back into the forecast settings we can click edit i can choose quarterly and you know we can go backwards and this goes applies to both monthly and quarterly you can go you can start from the past so you see eight quarters ago or you can start in the future eight quarters in the future 
I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, eight quarters in the future. Now, if you start eight quarters in the future, now you're extending further another eight quarters. Look at my date range. I'm starting Q4, uh, Q4 of 2025 to Q3 of 2027. So that's, and we're in 2023. So we're far into the future. Now, if I go into monthly and I want to go 15 months ago, and then I'm going to go 15 months into the future, right? You'll see, actually, let me go not 15 months ago, 15 months into the future. So you go, it takes you to 2026, right? But it's not as far ahead as it was when we went quarterly. You'll see that it only took us to 2026. So that's the difference. If I want to forecast way ahead, then then quarterly is your, your option that you want to choose. Because look, now we're going to 2027. Okay, so now you're be, you're going to be able to forecast in quarters into that year. Okay, so let me actually just show you how that's, this looks on the front end. Okay, so it's saved here. Let's go back into our forecast page. Let's reload this. Look at that. See, it defaulted to the forecast range that we set up in our settings. Okay. So right away, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to see my, my forecasts, you know, from 2025 to 2027 defaulted. Now, you'll see the eight quarters show up here. You know, and I can go ahead and I can forecast against these quarters. But traditionally, and what I've seen a lot of my clients do is they just default back to monthly and they go from the current month to six months to a year in the future. So it's really based off of your business, you know, to each their own. Uh, but this is the most common thing that I see. So let's go back and let's change it to uh, this month. So we're forecasting from the current month and 12 months into the future. Okay, let's hit save. I understand. Change settings. Okay. Now that that's done, let's refresh our forecast page and you'll notice the quarters column now changes to monthly, right? And we're back to what we specified. Okay, so current period. And it seems like there's a little bit of a bug here because it doesn't show me the same date range as what's showing up here. That's fine. But you'll notice now when I hit save again, it does show me what I specified in the back end, uh, in the forecast setting, sorry, uh, or back end. You can say back end, just a little bit more technical. Um, and yeah, that's it. All right. So that's your date ranges. This is a quite a powerful setting that you know you would want to set up um, to be able to forecast against a certain timeline that makes sense for your business. Okay. The final stage, and then you're done setting up forecasts for your company or for your client, okay? It's showing your quotas. Actually, you're not done yet. <laughs> Never mind. This is not just the last step, okay? So you'll see here when I expand this and I click edit, it says show quotas. And when you check off this option, what it's going to do, okay, is it's going to show the quotas column, okay? Now, if I... Just go back to our forecast page. Look at this. You'll see there's a quotas column already. And the reason why is because I already had this option checked. What if I uncheck this and I hit save? Okay. Let's go back to forecast. Let's hit refresh. And look at that. The quota column is gone. Okay, so you're no longer able to see quotas. So what are quotas? Quotas is basically the ability for your sales team to be measured against a target. A quota is a sales target, essentially. So your managers likely are the ones setting up your sales targets for their team. And they're saying, hey, for this particular forecast period, whether it's for the year, for the month, whatever, I want you to hit a certain amount of dollars for this particular month or for this particular year. Uh, because we're in monthly, it would actually be set up per month. Okay. Um, so let me show you what I'm talking about. So if I go back and I show our quotas again, okay. 
okay and let's go to our forecast quotas okay and this is the last step right here so you'll notice right away it defaults to the months it goes month to month and it goes all the way back to 2022 of last year and all the way up to 2025 of january um <clears throat> and you can go in uh usually it would be the the sales manager that would go in and they would set up these forecast quotas okay so they would specify the month for what, for what month they want to set the quota for. And they would also set up for against which forecast type, which we discussed in an earlier video. So you'll see, I'm going to actually specify for opportunity revenue by close date. I forgot to add the by close date here because that's what we're measuring against is the close date. Um, and going back to the forecast ranges, your close date is being compared against your date ranges that we've set up. So because we're setting up our date range to the current month and 12 months into the future, our, it's going to filter in all opportunities that fall with a close date that fall within that date range. Okay. I forgot to mention that. Um, okay. So for our quotas, you specify the month. Let's go into October of 2023. Okay. We're going to specify for this forecast type. I'm going to click show quotas. And right here, it says assign quotas to users. And it says search people and roles. So I could set up a forecast for a particular role, whether it's my Eastern sales team or my Western sales team, however you set up your roles, uh, you can you can set up your, you can assign your quotas based on roles or for specific users, okay? Now you'll notice here, we already have three users here, okay? And each of their roles show up. So the Eastern sales team, and then the director, direct sales here, okay? And I can go ahead and I can select the particular sales rep that right that I want to assign the quota against. Okay. Now I can go and just do it one by one, or I can go ahead and select in batch which ones I want to update the same quota amount against. So that way you're saving time. You're not going one by one, especially if you have a large sales team. So for, for myself and Sunil. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sign a $1 million quota. Okay. And I know this is pretty aggressive, right? But let's just say it was a million dollars for the month of October. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save. All right. And that's it. You'll see now that $1 million has been assigned to both Sunil and myself for the month of October. Now, if I change it to November and I hit show quotas, You'll notice it refreshes and it shows you the quotas for that particular month. Because we haven't assigned quotas yet for this month, you're not going to see anything. If I go back to October and I hit show revenues for this forecast type, you'll see that my $1 million quota has been assigned. I can always come back and adjust my quotas going through here. Another way you can adjust your quotas is you can import directly into the quotas table. Now, the quotas table is called forecast quotas. And I feel like that is a more efficient way of doing it. I mean, depending on how large your sales team is, you might want to just have a spreadsheet that is, you know, matching the template that is accepted to, to Salesforce and basically just go into your spreadsheet and assign your quota numbers for your entire team and just import it all at once. Boom, done, job's done. That's another way of doing it. But you can also do it here. You know, if your sales team is not as large, it's more of a mid-sized to small size sales team, then this is highly effective. You know, you still have the ability to select all, select and batch, go one by one. So it's quite flexible. Okay. You can go by roles, by people. Um, so it's quite flexible. So let's go now to our forecast page and let's see that $1 million amount show up underneath our quotas column. Let's hit refresh. And there we have it, $1 million for the month of October. If I expand this, I see both myself and Marco Forster's opportunities show up. And you'll notice that because I didn't assign any quota against Marco Forster, he does not have a quota amount showing up here, okay? Now, for me, you'll notice October, we have $1 million, okay? Now, if I go to the right, you'll notice that I actually have this progress bar, which shows 40%.
This is your percentage of attainment. So this is what it's doing is it's taking your, your opportunity amount sum for that particular month, and it's comparing it against the quota amount that you've set up. So because my sum of, of um, opportunity amounts is $400,000 for this month, okay, that's in my pipeline, in the open pipeline, and my quota is $1 million, it's showing me that I'm 40% or 60% away, it shows it shows 40%, which means I'm 60% away from achieving my quota target in this particular category of open pipeline, this, this forecast category. Now you'll notice here, I have 10,000, all right, for the rest of them. And that's because I have another opportunity with an amount of 10,000. It's showing me only 1% for all my other categories, which means I still have 99% I need to go to meet my quota target. Now, this is not a real, realistic example. I mean, in real life, it would never be that great of a difference. Uh, it's quite aggressive, you know, um, for small, medium-sized businesses, enterprise businesses, you know, even a $1 million target in one month, that's quite aggressive. I mean, it can be done. I mean, if you're Google or Apple or something, it's, it's achievable. Maybe a large telecommunications company, um, you know, that could be achievable. But this is just an example of showing you how quotas work. Isn't that cool? Showing you your percentage to attainment, you know, how much you have completed so far against your quota amount. And that's essentially your quotas, guys.